Welcome back friends on this channel Agribeats with Yoli. So ang topic po natin ngayon is about uh, principles and practices of plant propagation. So pag-usapan muna natin ano ba yung mga basic types of reproduction and propagation. So ito ay isang uh, topic sa mga agriculture students especially kung ano ba yung mga physiological aspects, ano ba yung Uh, science or biology behind why uh, we are doing plant propagation or why we are multiplying okay, the species or the kinds of plants. So, derecho, ano ba ang uh, plant propagation? So, this is the basic question. What is plant propagation? So, it is the multiplication of plants by both sexual and asexual means. So, in plants, meron tayong tinatawag na asexual means and sexual means of plant propagation. And ito ay hihimayin natin later on sa ating, uh, sa lesson natin. Then, this is also any method used to increase or multiply plants or we get to get new plants from old plants. So, we get new plants uh, para ma-renew naman sila aside from multiplying our species or crop species. So there are many different plant parts that can be used including seeds. Seeds okay, is basically defined as the matured ovule. Diba? But agriculturally, meron tayong um, definition sa seed aside from the botanical definition which is the matured ovule. Pero agriculturally, if we define seeds, ito ay lahat ng parts ng plant na pwede nating gamitin na magmultiply or magreproduce ng uh, any kind of plant that we have. So, ano ba yung mga plant parts that can be used for plant propagation? We have the seeds, we have even the leaves, the stem pieces, the bulbs, root pieces, or even buds mismo. Okay? So, there are our goals, of course, of plant propagation. Hindi naman natin ginagawa ang plant propagation if we have no goal, if there is no, wala tayong uh, aim. Bakit natin ito ginagawa? So, uh, yung goal ng plant propagation is, of course, to preserve a particular genotype or population of genotypes. So, we'll define genotype later on that will reproduce the particular kind of plant being propagated. And the source of planting materials for propagation are, uh, we have seeds. Yung sabi natin kanina, seeds, meron tayong leaves, okay, ulitin natin ito, stem pieces, the bulbs, or even uh, corms, root pieces, buds, okay? Then, kailangan natin na malaman itong three requirements on the study of plant propagation. Kailangan natin yung knowledge of mechanical, environmental, and chemical manipulations, and even, of course, very important ang ating technical skills to master, such as how, okay, or when, to bud, or why. You have to answer those questions. Why do you do grafting or budding? So, kailangan natin yung knowledge sa mechanical, environmental, and even yung chemical manipulations, meaning yung mga physiological manipulations that we need to understand sa nangyayari sa sistema ng ating tanim. Okay? Para successful ang ating plant propagation or successful ang ating budding or grafting. So, how to make cuttings? Kailangan din technical skill dyan. I-master natin paano ba ang uh, mag-cutting. Hindi lang yung uh, cut kayo lang ng cut dyan. Okay? But there are also uh, reasons why para hindi masyadong mataas ang mortality natin pag uh, we do propagation through cuttings. Or even how to use tissue culture procedures and ito ay medyo mataas ang kailangan natin na technical skills okay, sa tissue culture procedures for which this may be considered as the 
art of propagation. So, sa plant propagation, we need to have that. We know we have to have that uh, art and skills and understand the science behind what we are doing. And uh, another is it requires a knowledge of plant growth. So, sa science, sa physiology, okay, kailangan natin maintindihan ano ba yung uh, nangyayari sa sistema ng ating tanim, why they grow like that, like this. We need to know, okay, we have the knowledge of development and morphology, and for which is considered as the science of propagation supplemented with formal chemist courses in ito, chemistry, botany, horticulture, genetics, and plant physiology. So, sa atin naman, mga uh, studyante sa agriculture or graduate sa agriculture, meron naman tayong subjects, di ba? Sa chemistry, itong mga courses na ito. So, um, ito ay mga disciplines na we apply kapag we are doing plant propagation or if we are multiplying our plants. <clears throat> Another requirement on the study of plant propagation is it requires knowledge of the different kinds of plants and the various possible methods by which certain plants can be propagated. Kasi may mga ibang plants na alam natin, cuttings lang, ano? But, hindi siya pala pwede by cuttings. So, kailangan ang seeds. Okay? Uh, may ibang plants na <clears throat> alam natin ay uh, by seeds lang. Pero hindi natin alam na pwede pala siyang i-cut. Okay? It can be propagated through cuttings or even through leaves. So, there are plants na alam natin hindi yan napopropagate through uh, leaves. Pero, ang basic pala ng, prop, uh, ng multiplication niya is through seeds. So, kailangan natin yung mga knowledge about these different kinds of plants. So, what are the basic types of reproduction or propagation? Okay, so ulitin natin sa seeds. So ano yung seeds? Medyo matagal itong uh, ano natin, itong topic natin ang, ang, ng seeds. Alamin natin ano yung seeds. Ano ba yung mga ginagawa sa seeds? Kasi we are agriculture students, we are agriculturists, we are agriculture professionals. So basic lang ang mga ito that we should understand about seeds. So, seeds, as we know, are living organisms and uh, kapag buto na siya, okay, uh, seed na siya, nasa dormant or resting stage na yan. So, lahat ng meta metabolic processes, mga physiological processes niya, ay nakastop muna. So, nakatulog muna yung seeds until uh, certain uh, favorable conditions are given to it especially water, sunshine, okay, then it would wake up, germinate, and grow as a plant. So, botanically, a seed is a matured ovule, as sabi natin kanina, and this contains these parts. One is embryo. So, yung embryo, it is a miniature plant, okay, na nandun sa loob ng seed na iyan, and this is usually the product of fertilization of egg cell by one of two male nuclei from the pollen tube and consists of a radical, okay, a plumule or epicotyl. So, a plumule is also termed as epicotyl and the hypocotyl. So, basically, ang mga seeds are, these are food reserves. And, uh, it contains either in the endosperm, ang endosperm ay ito yung fleshy na uh, tinatawag natin na kotile doon, which is part of the embryo. And, it's derived from, ito, etong kotile doon, or endosperm, ay nade-develop ito from the future, fusion, from the fusion, sorry, of the other male nuclei. Kasi dalawa yung male nuclei eh. So, yung dalawang male nuclei kasi, yung isa doon, 
it is used to develop yung embryo and yung isa ay it is used to or, or used sa development ng endosperm. So yung fusion of the other male nuclei with the two with the two polar nuclei in the ovary will be uh, will develop itong um, endosperm. Then we have the testa, or the actually it is the seed coat. So this protects or surrounds the cotyledon or the endosperm. Okay, and we have another is the radical, or it is the future leaf. So sa seed, if titingnan natin yung structure ng uh, seed, meron tayong of course first yung seed coat and the radical, which is the future leaf, and then the plumule or epicotyl. Okay, which is actually the future root. So, I'm sorry, paki-change ito, it should be root. So, yung epicotyl natin ay magiging root siya later on. And then, the hypocotyl, which connects the radical and then the plumule, then the hilum. Ito yung scar, nakikita natin lahat ito sa seed eh. Okay, yung scar, especially sa halos lahat ng mga seeds, meron ito, yung parang mata niya. Okay? Then of course, the micropile. This is a very, very small opening near the, just near the hilum, itong micropile. And dito pumapasok ang tubig or, my, or moisture during uh, germination, okay? Para mabuhay ang ating seed. And eventually, it will germinate and all the metabolic processes will proceed. So ito, this is parang, uh, ano to, parang buto ng munggo. Ano? So makikina, makikita natin, this is the hilum. So actually, this is the scar uh, called hilum wherein it was attached doon sa uh, pod. Okay? So if this is mungo, it was attached to the case, yung pod. And then itong hilum, ito napakaligit. Usually we do not see this in seeds unless we use the microscope or the uh, or lenses para makita natin yung butas, which is called micropile. Nasabi ko natin kanina na dito pumapasok ang tubig or moisture pag mag-germinate na ang ating seed. Okay, so review natin ang parts ng ating seed. So we have cotyledon or the, uh, ito yung cotyledon and then the endosperm or ano bang, ano ba yung endosperm natin? Ano? Then the radical, this is the future root, hypocotyl, parang stem, ano, parang, pero hindi siya stem. But this is the part that connects the radical and then the plumule and then the epicotyl or plumule. Epicotyl or plumule, isa lang yan. So, itong tatlo, radical, hypocotyl, and epicotyl, these are the three uh, parts that compose, okay? Or ito yung tatlo na composition ng ating embryo. So, the embryo, may root siya, may parang stem siya, and then, of course, meron na siyang leaves to become a baby plant. Okay? And then, there are principles that we should know of seed production, selection, and handling seed storage and pest control. Dapat alam natin ito, ang mga ito sa plant propagation. Especially botanically, yung sabi natin ang seed ay isang matured ovule. And ito yung pinaka-basic na propagule ng, at, ng lahat halos ng mga tanim. Okay, kasi this rests, this becomes dormant and will survive later on para tuloy-tuloy ang uh, survival ng species na yan, plant species. So, kailangan natin in seed production, so these are principles that we should know if we are to produce, uh, if we are to, okay, yeah, produce volumes of seeds for planting later on. Okay, sa ating hectares of land. So, para magkaroon tayo ng napakamaayos naman na planting materials, and these are usually what plant propagators and even 
or seed producers do, even uh, plant breeders, they do this. So, kailangan ng isolation distance. So, this is intended for seed production. Okay? Kailangan natin ng isolation distance. Bakit? This is to maintain the genetic purity ng ating seed by preventing unwanted pollination, especially if yung uh, tanim ninyo or yung crop ninyo ay highly cross-pollinated. Kagaya ng mais, highly cross-pollinated yan. Nakakalayo ang kanyang pollen grains as far as far. Okay? So, kailangan natin yung isolation distance. This would also prevent unnecessary admixture of seeds, especially during harvest. Kasi kapag magkakatabi yung uh, mais mo dito na gusto mong, o halimbawa purple maize, tapos sa tabi niya ay white maize, eh for, for seed production yan, hindi for human consumption or for feeds. Kailangan yan, ma-preserve ang kanyang purity. So, kailangan mo yung isolation distance. Kasi ka, during harvest, not only for yung unwanted pollination na mangyayari, but during harvest, okay, mangyari na mangyari man ito, meron mga mixtures ng mga seeds during harvest. Especially when planting two cultivars of the same crop. Yun nga, di ba? And kailangan din natin ng isolation distance uh, that would vary according to the crop. Okay? Uh, pollination habit, halimbawa, self-pollinated siya or cross-pollinated. Kasi sa self-pollinated crops, medyo kahit medyo uh, closer ang this isolation distance. Pero pag cross yan, it should be really a distant away. And purposes for which seeds are grown. Ito nga, for self-pollinated crops, halimbawa yung mga solanaceous crops natin. Ano ang solanaceous crops natin? We have the tobacco, we have the talong, we have the tomato. Okay, ano ba ang examples ng ating other solanaceous crops? And uh, even legumes kasi self-pollinated ang mga ito. Ang tabako, talong, kamatis na solanaceous crops, they are self-pollinated. Including lahat ng, halos lahat ng ating mga legumes, okay, they are also self-pollinated crops. Ano bang example ng legumes ulit, okay? Okay, we have beans, we have mung bean, we have lahat ng klase ng beans. These are leguminous crops. So, kahit yung isolation distance is closer for these kinds of uh, uh, crops. Okay? Kasi hindi madali naman na mag-transfer yung or mag-cross yung mga pollen grains niya, especially kapag medyo malakas ang hangin or even yung travel ng mga pollinators like insects. And crops grown for commercial seeds need shorter isolation distances compared with those uh, grown for breeding stock, of course. Um, kung for commercial seeds yan, na halimbawa seeds lang for planting, na wala kang pakialam, basta't itanim mo siya, na healthy lang, kahit medyo shorter ang distance. Pero sabi ko for breeding stock, especially itong mga breeding institutions, Kailangan talaga yung ano, yung pure na pure ang madidevelop ng seed for uh, propagation or for breeding later on. So, kailangan talaga yung isolation distance malayo from each other. Eh, for breeding yan, eh, di ba? And then, we need other materials para ma-ensure natin yung uh, unwanted pollination or unwanted cross-pollination and then purity, ma-maintain natin yung purity ng ating seed. So, kailangan natin mga cages, mga polyethylene tunnels, the greenhouses, okay? These are used to prevent unwanted pollinating insects kasi ang insekto nakakalayo yan ng malayong malayo. Then, And then, halimbawa, eto, yung presence of pollinators, these are absolutely necessary. Kailangan natin talaga mga pollinators, especially where natural pollination is insufficient. Okay? Um, bees and wasps, okay? 
sa pamilya ng Hymenoptera, kailangan natin sila. And then we have also flies in the family Diptera. And other insects, of course, that feed on nectar, uh, we need them para sa pollination. So, my example dito, for, ex for example, ito actually, this uh, flower is, okay, this flower is a flower of maybe a pet chai or a cabbage, but it is a crucifer uh, flower. So, etong mga crucifers, ano na naman ang crucifer? <laughs> crucifer, the uh, mga crucifer crops natin, cabbage, Chinese cabbage, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, these are kohlrabi. Ito yung mga crucifer crops natin. At least one to two beehives kung walang, uh, kung kulang ang ating, ano, ang ating uh, insect uh, population for pollination sa area natin, then we can add pollinators. So, dito, at least one to two beehives can be present in the area to guarantee sufficient pollination. So, in cases where pollinators are not sufficient, then you can do this, okay? Uh, Mag-alaga kayo ng bees para tulungan yung mga natural na mga insects that are in your place. Or, you can do manual brushing or spraying of pollen grains sa mga receptive flowers ng inyong particular crop. Okay, another principle is regular field inspection and roguing. Okay, ano ang roguing? <laughs> so this is done throughout the entire uh, life cycle or growth stages of the crop. By what? Ito, pag sinabi natin roguing, this is the process wherein you remove other crops or cultivars. Okay? Or even yung mga weeds. Tanggalin natin yung mga weeds of type plants. Hindi, natin, hindi siya, uh, parang nagiging weed na siya kasi out of place siya. Okay? And even deformed plants. Yung mga deceased plants or infested plants, we remove them. Yan ay... Anong tawag doon sa practice na yan or the process na yan, we call it roguing. So, for example, dito sa eto, sa picture na ito, corn, okay, so you, you remove deformed or uh, plants that are infested kung may sakit siya or even yung mga alam mo na hindi na siya lalaki, okay, later on. So, remove them. That is roguing. So, you practice regular field inspection and do roguing. Then, uh, removing plants of early and late vegetation with characteristics that do not conform with the standard of the cultivar. For example, during flowering, kailangan mo talagang tanggalin yung mga hindi nagsisynchronize sa flowering, even sa fruiting stage, and even the harvesting stage. Dapat uniform sila. Pag nag-flower, nag-fruit, or hinarvest ninyo sila, so kailangan yan ay uh, uniform or synchronous sila. And then removal of all off types, yan na nga, a malformed and diseased fruits prior to seed extraction. So kapag nag-harvest na kayo, okay, i-separate ninyo lahat yung mga, alam yung mga infected na fruits where your seeds are, and lahat ng malformed of types, Linisin ninyo para naman yung ma-harvest ma ninyo or ma-extract ninyo yung mga seeds ay mga really healthy seeds. Then, harvesting at the most mature stage of the seed. Ito naman ay isang principle. Okay? So, this is the stage of physiological maturity of the seed when all the food reserves needed by the seed has been accumulated. So, ano bang definition ng physiological maturity? Okay? As opposed to commercial maturity. Sa post-harvest kasi, we have uh, post-harvest science, we have these terminologies. We have this physiological maturity, okay, physiological maturity, at meron din tayong tinatawag na commercial maturity. So, kailangan, if we are seed producers, 
Ah, ay dapat naman natin hintayin yung physiological maturity. So hanggang mag-ripe ang fruit or mag-mature yung seed bago natin sila i-harvest or i-extract. Pag commercial maturity kasi yan, this is for commercial purposes na kakainin ka agad. So kahit hindi siya uh, mature, kailangan natin i-harvest kasi ang maturity na hinahanap ng market is ganun lang kasi gagamitin nila for other purposes. For example, papaya, okay, or bananas. Kung hindi natin uh, hintayin ang papaya na mahinog or ma-reach niya yung physiological maturity niya, anong maitatanim mo doon or anong tutubo doon sa itatanim mo later on na seeds niya? So, of course, wala. Okay? Kung hindi mo hintayin yung physiological maturity. Pero kapag uh, commercial maturity yan, Uh, kahit hindi hinog yung papaya, iha-harvest mo yan kasi yan ang demand ng market. Anong purpose nila doon? Para pang tinola. Okay, mga ganon. Or, gagamitin nila as pickles. Papaya pickles, like that. Hindi kailangang hintayin na mag-mature, physiologically mature yung papaya bago mo i-harvest. Pero if we are after seed production, ay kailangan mong hintayin yung stage of physiological maturity of the seed when all of the food reserves needed by the seed has been accumulated, okay, doon sa seed. Thus, it is at its state of maximum dry weight, its highest vigor and quality level. And actually, this is the stage, the physiological uh, maturity or the most mature stage of the seed when the fruit is already ripe for harvesting or consumption literally for fruits and even plantation crops. Okay. Uh, another principle is selection of species or varieties for seed production. So generally, it, this is uh, identified by plant breeders or researchers from uh, research institutions. In some cases, uh, yung mga farmers, sila nang nag identify kung ano yung mga pinaka-outstanding na variety nila okay, sa specific area where they are. So, hindi na kailangan ang mga technician ng agriculture. Mga farmers mismo kasi sila mas, mas ano sila, experiences mas matalino ang mga farmers kesa yung nag-aral na <laughs> agriculturist. But, uh, you know, these are some truths that most of us or tayong mga agriculturists should um, should accept. Okay? Selection also depends on the demand of the market, the quality of variety, and suitability of the area for growing the crop. And then species or varieties that produce uh, high yields of good quality products and uh, tolerant sa pest, environmental stresses, are usually preferred. Then we have selection of seed sources. Uh, kailangan natin ito, especially for fruits and plantation crops. Okay? So by the way, alam ba ninyo ang difference ng fruit crop at plantation crops? I hope so, ha? Mga fruit and plantation crops. Ano ang diferensya nito? We're seed, okay? So selection of seed sources. So... Ito mga fruits and plantation crops. Um, yung seed nila is commercially used as planting material. And where the recommended variety is a cross-pollinated population, kagaya ng coconut or yung kape. So yung selection of seed sources takes several steps okay, to follow. Uh, selection of source farms that should have high yields. So, kailangan ito ay isang step to follow, selection of source farms that should have high yields. Alam naman ang isi-select mo yung farm, wala namang masyadong harvest, okay? And then, yung selection of mother plants that I have uh, uh, in terms of vigor, okay? Mataas ang vigor, yielding ability, free siya sa mga any diseases or pests or even insects. And then, selection of fruits or seeds. So, only best fruits should be selected where the best seeds are also selected. So, for example, we have here coffee and citrus. 
Coffee is a plantation crop. Okay. Coconut is also a plantation crop. Or cacao, these are plantation crops. Bakit tinatawag na plantation crop ang coffee, coconut, and cacao? <coughs> okay. Kasi kailangan pa muna silang i-process. So after harvest, hindi mo na ang kaka agad kakainin or gagamitin. You have to process them. May next stage dyan from harvesting. Meron next stage dyan na process. Okay? Ipaprocess mo sila bago sa final uh, product na kung saan sila pwedeng gamitin or i-consume. Ang coconut for commercial use. Okay, pwede mo nang kainin yung buko after harvest. Kainin mo pero hindi naman lahat ng uh, tao or ano eh. Sa, sa dami naman ng coconut, di ba? Hindi naman yan yung ultimate use ng coconut. For food, of course, na yung buko nga. Pero, tsaka yung tubig niya. But, you have to process this because there are several end products of coconut. Ang kape or cacao, kakainin mo ba yan? Hindi, di ba? Ipaprocess mo sila bago magiging chocolate or 3-in-1 uh, coffee. Kung tapos. Kung totoo mang kape, yung 3-in-1. And then, citrus. Okay, citrus is now your fruit crop. So, hindi na ito plantation crop. Okay? So, paano ba nadidefine ang, ang plantation crop at fruit crop? It's not based on sa laki ng hectares na, itinat na tinatanim. Okay? Na tinatamnan, tinatamnan mo ba? At it is based on the utility. Okay, ang definition is based on utility. So, citrus is a at, ano, uh, fruit crop. Uh, immediately from the, ano, from the tree, you can eat it. Diretso. And, uh, saan ba pwede? Aside from, secondary lang yung uh, juice. Okay, for, ju for uh, orange juice, those are secondary. But primarily, They are used for tables. So, halimbawa sa coffee and citrus, balik tayo sa selection of fruits or uh, of fruits or seeds. So, flotation method is done where all seeds that float are discarded. Coffee berries of uniform maturity are selected. Okay. Sa coconut naman, yung medium size and round shaped nuts are best. So, alamin, alamin natin ito kapag kayo ay nagseselect ng uh, magandang coconut for planting. So, hiselect ninyo yung medium size and round shaped nuts. They are the best. Hindi yung napakalaki. Mango and rambutan. Okay, these are fruit crops, not plantation crops. So, the large fruits with thinner or smaller seeds are usually preferred. Hindi yung mga maliliit. <laughs> okay, so ito yung mga skills, technical skills na kailangan natin sa plant propagation, especially sa seed selection. Okay, nursery or seedling selection naman. So, only seedlings that are vigorous should be chosen for planting. Usually, a higher seedling vigor okay, and early germination are correlated with good yield in the farm. So, proven naman na yan. Kapag uh, highly vigorous ang seedling, uh, very early yung kanyang genery, uh, germination, yung seed pa siya, nakakorelate ito. Later on, good yield ka ang ibibigay niya sa iyo. Okay? Now, handling seed storage and pest control. Kapag naman natin ang seeds natin, kasi ibibenta natin ito, especially if you are a company, na seed company. Okay? Nagbebenta kayo ng seeds. So, let's not uh, identify. <laughs> But we have several uh, seed companies here in the Philippines. Okay? We are subsidiaries of uh, seed companies from other countries. Ano bang Filipino-owned na seed company? Ano? Parang wala yata. I do not know. The Allied Botanical is that Filipino-owned. Okay, but usually, ang ating mga uh, seed companies where we buy ang ating uh, 
where we buy our seeds are foreign owned seed companies so if we handle seeds sa storage how do we control yung mga peste okay so seeds are considered to be in storage from the moment they reach their physiological maturity so magre-rest kasi yan eh uh, magdo-dormant siya so until they germinate or are thrown away because they are undesirable or are dead. Okay? So seed storage is very important because it helps preserve viability from harvest to sales and it protects producers' investments, the profit and if even the reputation of the seed organization or seed company. So handling and storage um, occurs at different stages as one is storage from physiological maturity to harvest harvest to processing especially for plantation crops yung storage in warehouses yung nasa warehouse na siya okay so paano siya i-store doon how, how long yung during transit Okay, so from harvest, how long would it be, um, would it be, would it be on the way, okay? So if you transfer it to a warehouse, to another warehouse, for example, or some processing plant, how is it, how long would it take if it is in re uh, retail stores, okay? Even at the farmer's farm, okay? So, mga ito ang kailangan nating ala alamin. So, a proper seed storage, a proper seed storage involves, one, it should be dry and uh, cool, okay? Uh, effective naman dapat siya. And kailangan yung proper sanitation sa lahat. Okay, surroundings and uh, lahat, of course. Kailangan yan. Madaling um, maatake ng peste or even fungi kapag hindi natin na-secure yung proper sanitation sa ating uh, storage area. Then, dry to save moisture content limits. Kailangan i-check parati ang moisture content, even yung uh, moisture uh, humidity and uh, temperature ng storage house natin. Uh, storage of high quality seeds only. Uh, well cleaned and treated and with high germination, vigor and good pre-storage history. So, alamin natin alamin natin ang mga storage requirement for seeds. Okay, one is uh, they should be placed in storage where they are free from inert matter to prevent pest and disease occurrence. Okay? Yung storage kasi, it usually depends on the length of time required and it can be classified as storage of commercial seed which usually falls between 0 to 9 months sa storage. So, after 9 months, uh, kailangan or before 9 months, kailangan na-dispose lahat ang ating uh, seeds for planting. Okay? And kailangan ito, it should be, yung storage house natin ay highly sanit, uh, highly uh, clean. Okay? Yung practice of sanitation should be well observed at all times to prevent yung occurrence ng pest and diseases, especially yung mga fung fungal, uh, uh, fungal uh, species that usually infect our seeds. And it should be, yung mga seeds naman, they should be 100% free from damages kasi pag crack or may damage ang seed, once may damage kasi ang seed, yan ay isang very uh, attractive sa growth ng mga fungi.
And then seeds must be dried up to the standard specified for the crop species. So lahat ng seeds natin may moisture content standards yan, ang mga limit nila. So for example, sa rice, we have 14% moisture content. Below it or above 14% moisture content, hindi yan maganda. Okay? And peanuts, we have uh, parang 21% moisture content. Yan ang kanyang limit. And other seeds. Lahat ng mga seeds may standard sila na moisture content. Mm, drying, uh, drying standards. And then storeroom structures should be constructed where seeds will not absorb moisture during the storage period. Okay, provision of adequate pest control methods. Kailangan natin din yan. Sa, as one requirement for seed storage. And yung pest control during seed storage. So, storage pests cause economic losses to stored seed by feeding on or spoiling or even contaminating yung mga seeds natin. So, kailangan natin mga uh, uh, ano dito, okay, fumigation or whatever to control them. Kasi, for example, sa seeds natin, these are the main storage pests of seeds. Mga insecto, okay? Mga rats. So, ang daming daga. Gusto nila, of course, kasi si, ano yan eh, seed, di ba? Birds. Ang daming mga house birds. Okay, fungal pathogens, particularly ang species ng aspergillum or penicillium because these are post-harvest uh, fungal species. Gustong gusto, na, gusto nila ang mga seeds. Okay, so there are measures to prevent pest attacks in seeds at storage. Kailangan natin uh, to use correct drying and storage at the right moisture content and Hermetic uh, storage or yung hermetic meaning walang air or parang vacuum. Vacuum storage ito. And then do not leave holes at doors during construction of uh, storage warehouses. Uh, ito ay entry ng mga rats if you leave holes. Practice proper storage hygiene. Uh, kailangan ng ventilation should be fit. Okay, mga openings and ventilations and with wire or wire gauze for protection. And then, uh, kailangan may anti-rat guards onto storage structures kasi napaka-ano ng rat. Uh, napakalaking peste ito sa mga seed storages. Use chemical baits and poison to control attacks. Okay, practice good hygiene. Uh, control the moisture content of the seeds. Eliminate damage and crack seeds para, ano ito, uh, it would prevent yung lodging ng fungal spores. Very attractive ang mga uh, crack seeds or damaged seeds for fungal uh, uh, lodging. So, uh, ito yung mga una na kanilang inaatake and eventually it will, the fungal spores will spread all over the storage house. Use appropriate fungicides and uh, for treatment or even uh, other control measures like dry heat or hot water treatment to control yung mga storage punjai. So, storage hygiene is the preventive technical measure that maintains quality of stored seeds. And this is a prerequisite for successful storage. Seeds stored should be hermetically sealed, which is the most important. Okay, the basic principles of store seed storage hygiene. Always keep the storage area and its surrounding clean. Okay, meron tayong kasabihan, a, a simple groove is the most effective and economical tool. Always keep the seeds cool and dry and always keep the storage uh, area in good condition. Okay, decisions and actions to maintain quality of seeds before and after storage. So before storage, check natin yung condition ng storage house. Okay ba siya? Na-repair ba siya? Walang leak? Walang crack? Uh, malinis ba talaga siya? Okay? And lahat ng mga rubbish ninyo, mga basura ninyo, itapon. Wala dapat sa surroundings ng storage house. Lahat ng mga empty pallets, okay? 
na hindi ginagamit, dapat i-disinfect sila lahat. Okay? Kahit contact pesticides man lang muna. And kailangan, i-accept lang natin ang delivery of seeds Okay, that meets the minimum standards. Hindi yung mas accept tayo na accept, especially if you're a seed company nga eh, di ba? You own a seed company or, or you are starting your own seed company. Hindi dapat, ano dapat may minimum standards kayo in accepting uh, seeds that are delivered to your warehouse. Mamaya, lahat ng, or buong warehouse ng yung seeds, contaminated na. Okay, so before accepting deliveries for storage, kailangan naman, my representative sample for you to test the purity. There are methods on testing purity, the moisture content, pest and disease infestation, lahat, quality and general conditions of the seeds. So based on your test results, dito sa letter A, mag-decide ka na whether to accept the lot or i-reject mo siya. So during storage naman, always keep storage uh, area clean, cool, and dry. Uh, okay, uh, you periodic you have to periodically test. Okay, by getting representative samples, you should follow protocols on testing. Then monitor the temperature of the stored seeds, even the moisture content of the storage area. You have to monitor this, and always, always, always keep surroundings clean. Walang matataas na mga damo kasi iyan ay mga uh, taguan ng mga daga. Then when removing seeds from storage, always remove lots with lower minimum standards of germinations first. Okay? And then always uh, yung mga any basura or waste from processing should be removed from the storage area. Clean. Always clean. And then, stack naman ninyo yung mga empty bags and pallets and fumigate every after use. And then, store equipment and chemicals separately. Okay? So, mga yon ang uh, kailangan natin alamin pag sa seed storage. So, we have here a self-evaluation. So, kailangan ninyong sagutin ito. Okay? Self-evaluation, you have to uh, <laughs> answer this para malaman natin na may natutunan kayo sa naituro sa iyo. Okay? Then, congratulate yourself kapag pumasa kayo. <laughs> okay, so, andito yung mga references na ginamit ko in coming up with this uh, uh, lesson or this video. So, ang next topic natin, so may mga parts ito, part 1 lang ito, mahaba kasi ito na part tong plant propagation. So, the next topic natin is asexual reproduction and propagation naman. Okay? So, thank you very much and uh, I encourage you para mag-subscribe and pakiclick naman yung like button. So, mag-comment kayo, especially if you have some questions. So, I ask you to really uh, subscribe para my, you will be notified on the subsequent uh, videos that I will be making later on. Okay, so thank you very much and please do keep safe.